Now it's my privilege to invite uh, Prof, uh, Dr. Prakash Choudhury from uh, Chittagong, Bangladesh, a good friend of ours, and uh, he's been uh, visiting our conference quite often. Uh, so welcome, Dr. Prakash. Let's hear from you. This is a key, keynote uh, lecture being delivered by uh, Dr. Prakash Choudhury. Pulse, uh, to deal with the uh, cataract with the small pupils. So the surgical challenges with the small pupils is visualization is compromised and it is very difficult to create optimum size axis and that affects all steps of the phacosurgery, surgery starting from the capsular axis to the IOL implantations. As a consequence it demands prolonged surgical time and there is more chance of damage to the other intercular structures. The, there are variant types of small pupils, some are elastic and that is due to the diffuse atrophy of the dilateral muscles and loss of muscle tone and mostly we found it in the IFIS and then some are rigid non-elastic and due to this fibrosis and atrophy of the constrictor pupillae which is mostly common with the pseudo exposition syndromes. And the characteristic, uh, so it is very important to distinguish the elastic from the non-elastic rigid pupils. The characteristic features of the elastic pupils are uh, the dancing and flattering movements of the iris during the irrigations and people expands momentarily with the injections to OVT but again returns to its normal size. On the other hand, the rigid pupils they do not dilate uh, with the injections to OVT, they only dilate after stretching the pupils. So first, at first I will uh, share my surgical pass to deal with the small pupils without pupil expansion device. And these are the my surgical pass. Yeah, I use uh, intercamular myodiatis and cohesivity to improve the dilatations of the pupils. I do intercapsule stain with dependable routinely under soft shell technique to improve the, uh, to make complete axis more confidently and safely. It is very crucial to make optimum size capsular axis. Judicious multi quadrant hydro is is very good uh, idea uh, so that the fluid pressures cannot build up behind the iris. If it is increased pressure build up behind the iris, that will cause the iris prolapse and will make the people small. Slow motion FECO with torsional ultrasonic is very important because with the slow motion FECO, the turbulence will be less. Because with increased turbulence, the pupil cells will be calmed down and slow motion FECO also useful to stay viscoelastic substance during the procedure. And it is very important to inject OBD before removal of the instrument to maintain the stability of the anterior chamber, which is very crucial to maintain the size of the pupils. <coughs> and bimanual IA is more effective than the coaxial IA because it greatly maintains the stability of the anterior chamber and I will insertion under cohesive body is, is another important thing. So in this clinical video, we can see the after making the side port, I first inject the uh, intercamular myodiatis to improve the dilatation of the people. Then I inject the dispersive body followed by cohesive body and ideal soft shell technique. Here I am uh, straining the anterior capsules under soft shell technique. And the main advantage of this technique, it does not allow the anterior chamber and pupil to get uh, collapse. And now I am proceed to uh, make a optimum size rexis as large as possible. Here I am following the pupillary margin to achieve the large rexis. And most important is the during hydro dissections, the, the, you have to, uh, the judicious amount of fluid you have to use and immediately after injection of the fluid, I immediately decompress the pupil so that the fluid pressures cannot build up behind the iris. And uh, to deal with the nucleus, I first uh, try to do enough deep sculpting which is a prerequisite to divide the nucleus into multiple small fragments. Here notice my inflow is very low. My motor height is only 50 centimeter and corresponding I have also very low aspiration flow rate, but I am using the optimum amount of ultrasounds uh, <coughs> to uh, deal, to make the uh, sculpting, and deep uh, sculpting. And during chopping also, I use very low inflow because when the tip is occluded, uh, to create the becom, there is only inflow, there is no outflow. So if I keep my inflow very high, and that will create increased pressure behind the iris, and that will cause us iris prolapse. And during fragment removal, it is very important to uh, maintain the optimal fluidic parameters. So we have to always keep in mind the input must be matched with the outputs and slow motion for the torsional ultrasound is very useful. The great advantage of the torsional ultrasound, it has outstanding followability, which is uh, very crucial to deal with the cataract with the small papers. And before take out the FACO probe, I inject in dispersive of the side port 
to maintain the stability of the anterior chamber, which is very crucial to maintain, minimize the uh, uh, size. Here, I'm using the bimanual IA to remove the cortex. Because irrigation and aspiration handpiece are separate, so it greatly maintain the stability of the anterior chamber, which is also, again, very crucial to maintain the size of the people during this procedure. And here, I'm injecting the cohesive body through the sideport before I will implantations to create better space. And these are these cohesive movements are highly entangled with each other, so they are also very easy to remove from, uh, from the eye. And Removal of OBD from behind the eye is also very important because if any OBD left behind, that will cause high rise of intercooler pressure post operatively. But the, if the cataract is very challenging one and visibility is compromised, in that case, it is wise to use the people expansion device to achieve wide surgical stable fields and to prevent interoperative complications. So there are some, though there are some drawbacks, it may cause the uh, more inflammation, more chance of. CMO and there is a more chance of post operative high rise of intercooler pressures. And these are the common people expansion devices we use, ID soak and ring device. Uh, ring device, this, uh, commonly we use the BHEX ring. The, uh, Dr. Shubhan Bharacharya is the uh, creator of this uh, uh, ring. And uh, the main advantage of the ring device, there is no need of extra parasynthesis and they, it less, it, um, less time consuming and post operative people distortion is less. But they are not as, as strong as eye hook because they only support the pupillary margins. On the other hand, here you can see the pupil is non-dilating rigid pupil. So uh, first I stress the pupils, then I place the BX uh, ring, uh, and then I inject the cohesive under the iris. Uh, and after being that, the plunges, the plunges with the holes, there is a tuck under the iris. And the best part of this BX ring is very easy to remove. And you see, after uh, removing, after implanting the BHX ring, the pupil is widely dilated, and I complete the uh, surgery very successfully and take out the BHX ring from the eye. Here it is a uh, complicated with the posterior sinus. So intercamular mitosis will not be affected over here. So to dilate the pupils, cohesive body, and as well as 360 degree sinusoidalysis is very crucial in this case. Here I am doing, I am breaking the uh, additions through the side port of the spatula, injecting cohesive down the iris just to lift up the iris margins. And now I am using the behexing uh, to uh, achieve the stable surgical fields and. Here you can see the, the BX and there are six planges, three planges uh, with hole and three planges, there is no hole. And there are six notches. So planges with the hole, they tuck under the iris and alternately the flanges with that hole, they place above the iris and notches are engaged to the iris margins. And here visibility also is very compromised because it's a uh, big top my size. And now you see through the side port, I disengage the BX from the pupillary margins, then easily it's taken out. You can take it through the side port also. Here it is a, here you can see it is a uh, white intumescent cataract here, making axis is very challenging so over here. So we need to, uh, we, we demand actually a stable surgical pill, paraparative. So I, uh, here I am doing the double uh, stress capsule axis after making the initial mini axis. Now I am decompressing the people by taking out the thick solen cortex. And here I am giving the tangential cut. Then I am enlarging the pupils to optimum size. Uh, it is a hard cataract also. So the pupil expansion device are very useful in the when you deal with the some challenging cataract, demanding cataract, and even demands uh, stable surgical fields even, uh, so that there is no iris prolapse during the operations. The the main drawbacks of the iris hooks it demands extra paracentesis, it demands more time, and it is mostly useful in the severe IFS power operative meiosis and suspected zonular laxity and peri peripheral axis tear. But, and, but the advantage is it is the strongest one and because it fixes the iris with the limbus. Here you've seen the pupil is well dilated before operations and after making the side port and when I inject the lignocaine and you see the pupil is greatly, very small. So I manage the pupil with the uh, uh, iris hooks. Here you can see that again there is interoperative meiosis. So uh, after injecting the cohesive down at the iris, I enlarge the people with the people expansion device. And now it's easy to me uh, to remove the cortex with the bimanual IA. And now I, this is a patient's uh, plan for to implant the multifocal eye well. So after being that, I implant the multifocal eye well. 
Here you can see, even tucking the BX thing under the iris, there is a axis tear at the periphery. So, what I did, I removed the BX rings and I uh, put the uh, iris hooks to see the peripheral extension from the tear. And I complete the axis in the anti clockwise direction. It is quite periphery. The axis tear was in the quite periphery and then successfully managed the case. And here is a traumatic cataract and there is a peripheral extension of the tear after injection of the ovary. So to assess the peripheral extension of the tear, I put the four, uh, I, that is iris hooks, and the, it is a periodic cataracts, traumatic cataracts, the uh, capsules is very elastic. So uh, I, anyhow, I manage the axis, uh, and I give a tangential cut over other sides, and complete the axis with the, uh, the micro axis forceps. Here it is planned for to implant the secondary eye There There is a uh, anterocapsules. You see in the six, seven o'clock, there is a anterocapsules also uh, not in text. So I, uh, by using the iris hook, I managed the case. Thank you so much for.